Hi, my name is Aziz. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you 13 British habits that I've acquired since moving to the UK. I'm originally from Brazil. I was brought up in Brazil for 23 years and I have lived in the UK for nine years. So I've acquired a few habits. I'll also share a few British habits that I haven't acquired, things that I haven't convinced myself that I ever will, or maybe it's just personal preference, but I thought I would share these with you. If you want to know anything else about my Brazilian side, how I came to live in the UK, how I became fluent in English, I'll leave a playlist below for you to catch up on some videos that I've done along the last few years. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, share it with a friend if you think they might like it, and subscribe if you're new. Now let's get straight into the video. The first British habit that I've acquired, which I think is very, very British, is apologizing for everything. I've never been kind of an unapologetic person. Even when I lived in Brazil, I was always very I'd say appropriately apologetic, but since living in the UK, I've become inappropriately, not inappropriately, but excessively apologetic, um, to the point where I apologize for apologizing. I feel like since living here, I say sorry for everything, for the way I look, if I haven't made any effort with my appearance and I'm seeing other people, I say sorry for nearly bumping into someone, I say sorry for not opening the door before another person tries to open the door, I say sorry for misunderstanding someone or just like not hearing them. It's just, I feel like it's a very British thing. Um, but yeah, that's a British habit that I have definitely acquired. Another British habit that I've acquired is not talking to strangers. That is a bit of a, a weird one that I realized recently when I went to Brazil to visit my family and I was at the airport and this lady started talking to me and I was completely taken by surprise and shock that she was talking to me and we didn't know each other. I feel like British people don't really talk to strangers in public, especially in big cities. I find where I live now, I live in South Wales, people, and I live in a small town, people do talk to strangers occasionally, but when I lived in London, it was just this unspoken rule that you don't talk to people, especially if you're on the tube or on the bus or anywhere just like awkward, like a park, you don't really talk to strangers. And that is not the case at all in Brazil. People talk to strangers all the time. And this lady that talked to me at the airport, she was Brazilian. So it kind of made sense that she was talking to me, but I was completely shocked how unnatural I found that which made me think that that's a British habit that I've acquired since living here. The next one is talking about the weather to make small talk. And this was never something that I remember doing in Brazil. I just, I tried to think back when I tried to make small talk with people, we'd talk about other things. I can't even remember what, but we'd never just like say, oh, it's really hot today or really cold today. Oh, it's so chilly, you need a coat. Oh, the weather is awful. Never any sort of those things. And here I find, especially in the school run, if I'm talking to other mums um, who I don't know very well, like the weather is the icebreaker, or if you're on a lift with other people, it's just talk about the weather and you'll be all right. <laughs> The next one is never sitting next to someone in public if I can avoid it. And this is definitely something that came from living here. I used to sit next to people all the time. If there was a seat next to someone, I'd sit next to that person, no problems. But since living here, I just find the weirdest, weirdest thing ever. I think because it's a lot more common here for people to do it this way, it's, to me, it seems weird that I would sit right next to someone. It's almost like, why, why would you sit next to me? Why would you be so close to me? It's like almost invading my, my personal space. So let me know if you're British, if you do that as well, of not sitting next to someone if there's another space. And if you're not British, let me know if you do that too. Another British habit that I've acquired is enjoying a breakfast fry up or a cooked breakfast, depending on which expression you've heard. And that is basically a full on fried breakfast, sausages, eggs, um, fried bread, um, baked beans, and a few other things that you can have on your plate. And I had never ever had breakfast 
like that anywhere else in the world. It was only when I came here that I discovered what a fry up was and a cooked breakfast. And nowadays I love a cooked breakfast. I don't have it often for lots of reasons. One, I'm not great at cooking and I don't want to die <laughs> because there's a lot of fried food on the plate. Um, but when I do, I love it, especially it's something that we usually do when we go on holiday. It's like a holiday tradition to have cooked breakfast every morning. But yeah, that's definitely definitely a British thing. Right, this one is quintessentially British and it is drinking tea and appreciating tea and a cuppa in general. I was never a tea kind of person until I moved here. It was coffee for me all the way and if I drank tea, drank, drank, drunk? No, if I drank tea back in Brazil it would be something like um, chamomile tea, just like not black tea with milk but now it's just like if I'm feeling a bit cold I have a cup of tea if I'm feeling a bit hot I have a cup of tea if I'm sad I have a cup of tea if I'm tired a cup of tea if I want to relax a cup of tea if things are just great let's have a cup of tea <laughs> and that is just so British isn't it if you are a foreigner living in the UK let me know if you've started to appreciate tea it didn't take me long to enjoy tea I thought it was going to take me much longer but I have a few friends who are from abroad as well and they still can't like British tea. So let me know if you like it. This British habit is not so much of a habit, but it's more the way that it's said here in the UK is very different to the way that it's said in Brazil. And I, I probably say the way said here in the UK more. So it's about referring to drinks. So here in the UK, if you say, let's go and grab a drink, you could be getting any drinks, water, um, non-alcoholic or alcoholic drinks. As in Brazil, if you ask someone to go and get a drink, they think you mean an alcoholic drink, generally. So when I was in Brazil last week, I said to my mum, should we get a drink? And she was just like, what, it's only midday and you wanna have a drink? And I meant, no, just a drink of water or something like that. So that's something I realized over there, you would actually say, in Brazil, you would say the drink you want. You say, let's go and have you know, a juice or let's go and have a beer. Let's go and, and grab, you know, I don't know, a smoothie, as here people just go, oh, let's go grab a drink and it could be anything. The next one is getting insurance for everything. This might not be an exclusively British thing, but it's something that wasn't part of the culture in Brazil growing up for me. It was definitely a learning curve when I came here and it's something that I do now completely instinctively. So if I buy a camera, I get insurance for the camera. We have house insurance and car insurance and thinking of getting life insurance. If I buy a phone, I get insurance on the phone. And whenever my family come up, comes over and they buy something expensive here, I always say, are you not gonna get insurance? And they are just, they, they are shocked by the question, why would I get insurance on such a simple purchase? But I think it's such, such a big part of the British culture to get insurance on things just in case they break. I don't know, I just, I feel like I've changed and I'm, I'm a lot more of an insurance person now than I used to be. Another very British thing is disclaimers and warning signs. Everywhere you go here in the UK, there are disclaimers, warning signs, mind the gap, um, mind the hole, um, yellow cones, and all of these warning signs everywhere. I think British people are big on disclaimers. Even when you're talking to other people and you kind of say something that might be offensive and you have to kind of justify yourself and you say, well, I didn't mean it in that way, just in case someone misunderstands you. Um, health and safety all of these disclaiming things are big here and that's definitely something that I've acquired I do I feel like I do them without thinking at all anymore I feel like in Brazil the big things get disclaimed but you would definitely not find as many warning signs and disclaimers over there as you do here the next British habit that I've acquired is the habit of understatement <laughs> So how many times have you heard someone say that they were in a car accident and you say, oh, how are you feeling? They go, oh, I'm okay. Just It was just a bit of a scratch and they have like a massive cut on their arm or something like that. That is such a British thing and I definitely do that. Like if I'm really struggling, you know, I tend to say, oh, I'm in a bit of a pickle or, you know, things are just not great. It kind of makes everything an understatement and this is a recent change for me. I feel like I haven't been an understatement kind of person until very recently. My husband is but like the, the definition of understatement and he's British, so he kind of 
it rubbed off on me and I feel like I'm an understatement kind of person. <laughs> Another one is measuring things in imperial unit and I've pretty much ditched the metric system since I moved here. I don't know why, it just feels a lot more natural because everything is in imperial units, you learn to know what they mean. So I, the only one that I kind of stick by is weight. I still know my weights better in, in metric system than the imperial system. So I still go by kilograms, but everything else Distance, I use miles to know a distance. Um, height for me, feet is a lot more intuitive and inches and things like that. And yeah, just pretty much everything else is imperial for me. The next British habit that I have acquired is politeness in driving. Now, I don't feel like I was ever an impolite driver, but I feel like living here has made me an even more polite driver and like more patient because everyone else is polite. You just have to be part of, you know, a big group. And in Brazil, there's a lot of beeping your horn. There's a lot of swearing and winding windows down and just like saying things to people or not wanting to wait in a queue of cars and trying to get your way past people. I feel like here there's a lot more of, of a structure to, you know, like the roads and people tend to wait more and just, they're just more polite in traffic. So I feel like I've only been driving here in the UK for less than a month, but for this month that I've been driving, I feel like I've been a lot more polite and yeah, just definitely a thing that I've acquired here in the UK. And the last British habit that I've acquired is appreciation for traditions. I feel like because the country is a lot older than Brazil, there's a lot of traditions here that have kept on. In Brazil, without generalizing, I think there's a big focus on new things and modern things and modernizing everything as here, there's a huge focus on traditions. With everything, um, my, my specific way that I've become more traditional is with family traditions, like doing the same things with my family every year. Also with traditional buildings and looking at old traditional buildings and appreciating them for what they are, instead of thinking of what they could be if it was a modern building. And I feel like I've always loved tradition, but it's been since living here that I've appreciated tradition. So these are all the British habits that I have acquired since living here. Now I have a handful of habits that I haven't acquired and I'll list them for you. The first one is dunking biscuits in my tea or just biscuits in general. I am not a biscuits kind of person. I don't don't even want a biscuit with my tea, let alone dunk my biscuit in the tea. If you're not British and you don't know, if you don't know what that means, it just li literally means grabbing a biscuit or a cookie and just dunking it in your tea and eating it like a bit soggy. <laughs> it's not something I enjoy, it's not something I do, but it's a very British thing and I think a lot of British people would feel really taken aback and offended by me saying this. So that's one British habit that I haven't acquired. The second British habit that I haven't acquired is eating chips. I don't have an urge to go and buy just a box full of chips or cheese on chips or anything with chips. I'd rather replace chips with anything. So if I go to a restaurant and I'm buying a burger, if there's an option to replace the chips with, you know, like vegetable sticks, I'll do that. Or with like mashed potato, I'll always choose anything but chips. And it is such a British thing to offer every single meal with chips and to have a chippy tea and things like that. That is not something that I have acquired. Another British habit that I haven't acquired is beating around the bush when talking to someone. So I, I feel like I'm a very direct person. So if someone asks me a question, I will answer it directly. And one very British thing that I have noticed since living here is that people tend to say things like you say, um, do you wanna go to the pub? And they will say, um, yeah, okay, maybe, or yeah, perhaps I'll come later, or um, yeah, I think I might come if I have the time, instead of saying, yes, I'll come, or no, I won't come, or I might come because of this and that. I find that British people do beat around the bush a lot more, and I don't mean say it in a rude way or be very blunt and curt, 
um, just generally like getting information out of British people is harder than out of Brazilian people or people that I have met who are not British so that's something I have not acquired I'm a very direct person and I will usually give you a, a, an answer if you ask me a question as, as directly as I can <laughs> I have three more habits that I've written down here on my phone but I don't think they are that important but I had written eating beans and toast that's something that a lot of people here do and although I do like beans and toast it's not something that I would choose to eat if I didn't have any money or if I didn't have any food in the house I'd rather just I don't know I, it's not something that comes to me like oh beans and toast and heavy drinking I've had my days of like uni days of drinking a lot and going out partying but I do not do heavy drinking and I feel like it's something that's quite socially accept acceptable here um, and watching soap operas again I don't think that's a British thing a lot of Brazilians do watch soap operas but I feel like I haven't really got into the soap operas here in the UK I've never watched like Emmerdale or Coronation Street or any of those like traditional soap operas I've not watched any of them these are the British habits that I have and haven't acquired don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're new I upload videos Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays at 7 p.m every week and I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye!